Being able to label an archaeological site as a location where Hernando de Soto had stepped foot is virtually impossible. So how do I prove that what I have found at an excavation site is from Soto's Entrada? Here is what I need. But keep in mind that the presence of 16th century artifacts does not necessarily mean Soto slept here. A good indication of a Soto encampment is a large number of trade goods, tools, military items, and items that were disposed of, meaning trash. The artifact assemblage must also be predominantly aboriginal and also hold at least one item or more that dates to the early 16th century. Lastly, the site itself should be mentioned in the Chronicles. One such site does exist that most research can agree on as having the Soto footprint. That site is located in Florida's capital town of Tallahassee. This site was named the Governor Martin site and it was where Hernando de Soto based his winter encampment. According to the four chroniclers of the expedition, the winter encampment was located at Anhaica in the Appalachian province of La Florida because of the amount of food grown there and the village's proximity to water. My job is to look at the four chronicles and see which items Hernando de Soto would have brought from his camp in Tampa into the interior of Florida. You have to imagine what Hernando de Soto and his army would have looked like walking through here in 1539. And this is where we have to refer to the chronicles. So making lists here is important. In the account by a gentleman from Elvas, Anhaika is described as having an abundance of food. The soldiers brought with them hounds, horses, arquebuses, crossbows, armor, and slaves. Luis Hernandez de Viedma wrote an account that holds little information of the winter encampment. Rodrigo Ronhel notes that the town was burned twice by natives. And lastly, Garcilaso de la Vega the Inca is the longest and most detailed chronicler. He writes that there were 1,500 people at the winter encampment, 300 horses were stabled, cattle were bred, hogs roamed, and silk was made. We must now begin to review the items uncovered at the Soto archaeological site. Because Anhaika is the only identified Soto site, we will use this as the roadmap for discussing Soto's footprint in modern Florida. So what did Calvin Jones dig up at the Governor Martin site in Tallahassee, and how can we link it to Soto? When the site was excavated in 1987, Jones and other archaeologists who were present found pottery shards, over 2,000 chain links that were from armor, middle spear points called crossbow quarrel, coins, burnt clay with palm frond impressions, glass fragments, burial pits, burn pits, and lastly, a pig jawbone. None of these discussed features alone can be interpreted as anything other than part of a late Fort Walton period Appalachian village. However, the distribution of 16th century European artifacts suggests the nature of the site's previous occupants referring to Soto. The goal of this archaeological project was to indicate, by presence or absence of 16th century materials, the extent of the Soto encampment. Interestingly, the one item that was most significant to the archaeological findings of Anhaika was the pig jaw. Here is an example of what one might look like. Soto brought with him a herd of swine, so he could avoid experiencing the same fate as Narvaez did before him. It was this pig jaw that set in stone the Soto identification of the Governor Martin archaeological site. Remember, this site was excavated in 1987. Recently, the pig jaw had testing done to it with new technology by Dr. Dan Seinfeld. He concluded that the pig actually came from a much later date. If this pig jaw is so important to Jones's identification of the winter encampment, does this new finding alter the legitimacy of the site? As of now, no, but it makes me question why not. There are numerous other archaeology sites in Florida that hold similar findings. Same materials, same artifacts, and same relation to the chronicles. But why haven't these other sites been labeled as Soto's? Other than some locations just no longer existing because of the human need to build, most other existing sites are remote and distant. Thus, their locations remain insignificant to the state of Florida. Anhaika brought on much buzz because it was located within the capital of Florida. I think if Jones found this site anywhere else, it would long be forgotten. What makes identification nearly impossible is the possibility that these items were traded, stolen, or moved from where Soto and his men left them. 
It became my understanding that the Winter Encampment archaeological site only exists because of politics. Don't let that statement take away any importance and credibility of the site. It was a truly miraculous find. I'm simply challenging why it is the only Soto site when there should perhaps be more or none at all. Okay, so what I found here on the, the Hernando de Soto nature walk in the Hernando de Soto memorial is uh, the Battle of Mavila in Elvas. Um, and here we have, we have a scene. We have a scene from Mavila. Because it was here, Mavila. Love it. Thanks, Elvas.